Hey guys, it's Dawson here, and I want to share with you a bit what the vision is for the Friends and Flow community. So our mission is to bring as many people as possible out of the fog and into the flow. So what do I mean by the fog and the flow? Well, we can look at it in the moment, the feeling, the experience. And when you're in the fog is when you're bored, stressed out, you know, overeating, doing bad stuff yourself, disconnected from the people around you. That is what I call the fog. Now, to contrast that with what it's like to be in the flow, when you're deeply immersed in music or art, creative expression, an immersive conversation, exercising, flowing with your body, all these things are called the flow. So that is what it looks like in the moment as an experience. But we can also take it to a big picture, abstract kind of view. The fog you can think of as the anxiety cycle or the depression cycle is the same thing where you start to worry and panic about the situation, um, which makes you then avoid what it is you need to take care of to make things better. And you get a temporary relief from that, but then that problem doesn't go away. So it comes back resurgent even stronger. And then you lose confidence in your ability to take care of it and you worry even more. And this becomes a vicious cycle, which leads to a downward spiral. Compare that to the virtuous cycle of flow. Another way you can think about flow is in the long term is over time, as long as you stay and you match your skill level to your challenge, take on bigger and bigger challenges and stay in that flow channel, you will get better and better over time and avoid anxiety and stress and boredom and depression. Um, so this is pretty abstract. What I like to give as a metaphor is imagine there's a river, right? heading towards the North Star, going the direction you want to go, right? And alongside this river, you have the fog. So the flow is the river, and the fog is what's alongside the river. Now, if you're in the flow, as we saw in those images earlier, you're much more happy, you're much more present, you're much more aware. It's just a better place to be compared to the fog where you're either going to be stressed out and anxious or bored and depressed right? So the flow is obviously better than the fog. We want to hang out there more. So the question that becomes, what puts you in the fog versus what puts you in the flow? So these are the activities when we run our surveys and whatnot that people say will put them in the fog. Nonstop news consumption, watching too much Netflix and TV binging, uh, being too much on social media, Instagram, Facebook, playing too many video games, looking at too much porn, not moving your body, staying in the same place in your chair or your couch all day getting poor sleep, eating poor food, abusing different drugs and substances. And then even on a more kind of spiritual um, behavior level, being arrogant, dishonest, resentful, whiny, lazy, incompetent, irresponsible, and cowardly. Whenever you engage in these types of activities, you become deeper and deeper into the fog, right? Now, let's compare that once again to what puts you in the flow. When you accomplish your goals, you express yourself creatively and explore new things when you learn and improve, um, when you're feeling productive, when you connect and bond with your friends and people you care about, your family, when you move your body, you exercise, get the blood flowing, listen to music, dance, enter into that, lose yourself to the flow of music, eat healthy, get quality sleep, meditate, clear your mind, spend time in nature. And once again, on a behavior point of view, when you're humble, you're honest, industrious, courageous, competent, reliable, and responsible, whenever you find yourself doing those things, you end up going deeper and deeper into the flow and things get better, right? So if you look at that list, you might notice that the things that put you in the fog are much easier to do than the ones that put you in the flow. So if it's easier, why not just stay there? Well, it's not just about the fact that being in the flow is more fun and enjoyable and engaging compared to being in the fog. It's also safer in the flow. It's very dangerous in the fog. It might not seem that way, but if you wait long enough, dragons and monsters and threats and danger is waiting all around. And if you're in the fog and you're weak and you're not prepared for it and you don't see it coming, it will get you, will catch you by surprise, and you'll be done. Meanwhile, if you're prepared, if you're active, if you're alert and you're aware and you're in the flow, you can avoid those disasters. So this really is important. So what is the secret to staying out of the fog and in the flow? Well, I want you to imagine if you're in the, you know, the flow by yourself and 
I'm sure you've had the experiences in your life where things are going very well for you, things are moving ahead, you're feeling pretty engaged, but over time, without really realizing it, you kind of drift off. And then one day you wake up and you're kind of like, oh, I'm not feeling as good as I did yesterday, but whatever, right? And then you keep going and going and then drift off more and more. And then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I actually don't feel that good at all. I'm kind of bored, right? And then that boredom turns into a depression. And then all of these things get behind on your work. And then you start getting anxious about that and then kind of sad and depressed and anxious and stressed out about that. And then before you know it, you're like, oh, wait, I'm in the fog. How did I get here? And then boom, dragon comes, dead meat, right? So that's how quickly it can happen. I'm sure you can relate to that experience. Now imagine you're in the f flow with somebody else, right? Same situation. You're having a good time. You're flowing. And without you really realizing it, you start to drift off course. But now you have someone who notices it. And then that person comes and before you go off too far, he's like, yo, what are you doing? Why are you staying up late at night? Why are you eating that bag of Doritos? Why are you on Instagram for the past two hours? Right? And they're like, huh? Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, I almost fell into the fog. Thanks for saving me. You're like, yeah, I got you, buddy. You bring it back in and you guys are both back in the flow. And then a week later, you know, you pay him back or you pay her back a solid and then she's drifting off into the fog and you catch her, but hey, come back here. And all you know, you could have saved her life because it might have been a dragon waiting there if she had kept going in the direction she was going, right? So the secret to keeping yourself out of the fog and in the flow is to focus on keeping others out of the fog and in the flow. So you always got to start with you, right? Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're strong. Make sure you're fit. Make sure you're you know, mentally sharp on top of your work, on top of your responsibilities. When you start to get yourself in flow, then you lead by example. And you start to get to your people your first responsibility, which is your family. And you start to be like, hey, you know, to your parent, to your child, to your husband, to your wife, whoever it is, be like, hey, I noticed you're slipping off. Let me help you. Let me invite you. To, you know, come work out with me. Let me cook you a good meal. Let me give you a shoulder to cry on and let's take care of us, right? So once you're in flow, it's much easier for you then to come and get other people to in flow, to keep you guys all together so you can look after each other. And then once your family's in flow, then you can go off and help other people and your friends. And actually, a lot of times it's difficult to put your family in flow. So sometimes you have to start with your friends and then your friends help you put your family in flow. Everything goes you know, back and forth, right? And then once you and your family and your friends are in flow, you got a tight unit and then you can go out there and make the broader community better, right? And this is really what we're trying to do here in this world. So once again, our mission at the Friends and Flow is to bring as many people as possible out of the fog and into the flow, starting with yourself and then the rest of us. Now, I don't need to really say right now that there are many dangers that lie ahead in our immediate future right now. So the reason why we're taking this initiative is because we need to succeed. The more people who are in the quarantine, allowing themselves to slide deeper and deeper into a fog, the more likely that the things that are waiting for us in the future are going to take us out. But if we start acting now and get ourselves together, get our families together, get our friends together, get our communities together, we'll be way more resilient and way more likely to successfully overcome these challenges. So this is what the Friends and Flow community is about. It's a social network that incentivizes you to do the things that get you out of the fog and into the flow. Now, as an experiment, we'll be constantly tweaking it, starting with a small group of people and then gradually growing it as things start to work. The main thing we're going to focus on is this aspect of visibility on other people flowing. Think about all the times in the past week where you, for whatever reason, build up the energy to, you know, create something, get something done, clean up that room in your house. Now, if other people saw you do that, if there was visibility on your flow, it would have inspired and encouraged them to do that in their own life, but they didn't see it. So the main point of this community is whenever you flow and you remember to do so, I want you to share that you're doing that, preferably with a photo or a video so that the other person can pick up their phone and look at their computer and be like, oh, look, Jennifer here in Bulgaria is uh, cleaning up her attic. You know what? I was going to go pack open, pop open his bag of Doritos, but let me go clean my closet because now I'm feeling inspired, right? Um, so that's going to be our first layer. And then after that, um, when we look at goal setting and planning structures, trying to figure out ways to, um, 
you know, we have done this in previous projects, get people to think more clearly, choose wiser goals, um, set up better plans, I'll keep them there. And then on top of that, setting up accountability structures. So we're actually like watching each other and being like, oh, hey, did you do this thing you said you're going to do? Um, that, you know, that incentive goes a long way to make sure you do the flow activities you need to do and follow through on the goals you set so you can keep moving forward and getting, getting flowing forward. Um, and then the final level of it that I want to tweak on a lot is kind of really quantifying flow. Like, you know, how many times in a day are you following through on your commitments, accomplishing your goals, doing flow activities, restraining yourself from doing uh, fog activities, and there'll be uh, scoring you know, when people get scores, maybe some competition, at least very least recognition of the people who are flowing the most and helping out and contributing the most and then giving rewards and, you know, Amazon gift cards, whatever it may be. The whole point is here we're going to keep tweaking the dials and figuring out how we can incentivize you to do more and more flow so that you can incentivize other people to do more and more flow and less and less fog. So this is a quick example of what it would look like me and the community manager, Jessica, are kind of setting this up today and and tonight she was uh, doing some watercolor, right? So that's creative flow. We have a channel here for creativity, right? And then later on, her and I play some chess. You know, so instead of watching TV or being alone by ourselves on our cell phones, we play some chess, listen to some music, and had some friendship flow, some good socialization, right? And then earlier on that day, I did some stuff with my family. My mom was sewing. My dad was cooking some stuff in the kitchen. You know, Je Je Jessica was doing stuff. So I was like, boom. So when you see this, like family bonding, everyone having a good time. Maybe you see that and then you're with your family. You look up, everybody's in their cell phone. You're like, you know what, everybody, let's play some board games together, right? Or like, let's go out a walk in nature together. So you'll learn more about this in the next um, content. But basically, these are the categories we're going to start working with. And whenever you flow in any of these categories, we want you to share it with us in video, photo, or at the very minimum text form. Um, and then we're going to get a feed going of a bunch of people flowing, as well as restricting their fog activities. Uh, so that's the idea. Let's try it out. We'll start small and think big and keep gradually building it up and keep our eyes on the mission of bringing as many people out of the fog and into the flow as possible. All right. Thanks for watching.